Stephen McMaster made several stops throughout the Lowcountry to rally voters. He was joined by other Republican nominees, such as Congresswoman Nancy Mace and Superintendent of Education nominee Ellen Weaver. Our Kennedy Buck followed the governor today for a look at his plans to sway any undecided voters. As early voting ends statewide, time is of the essence for South Carolina candidates. Once we get to Tuesday, the work's not done. The work's not done. The work only begins on Tuesday, but you got to get out and vote. Saturday morning, Governor Henry McMaster and Lieutenant Governor Pamela Yvette stopped in the low country to rally voters alongside other Republican candidates. Let me just tell you real quick why I back Henry Mack. He has been a tireless champion for our teachers. We have raised teacher pay consistently over the last five years, and we're not going to stop now. Governor McMaster made it a point to reference some of his accomplishments he's made during his time in office. That we have had our best year in capital investment in our state that we've ever had, over $5 billion, $5 billion this year, and we still count. And pinpointing issues he wants to see resolved if reelected. We will get rid of catch and release. <laughs> so don't catch and release violent criminals. They send them to jail and you send them there for a long, long time. He also emphasized some pivotal points for South Carolinians. A few months ago, I signed out at Fort Jackson the first agreement by any state in the country to provide that anyone uh, going out of the Army who wants to come to South Carolina, any veteran wants to come to South Carolina and go to work and live, we will guarantee them five job interviews in South Carolina. Yeah. But his main message? To get out and vote. Because this is an important election coming, as has been said already. And so we got work to do, and we could do our part in South Carolina because South Carolina more and more is becoming recognized as a leader. A state of leaders doing everything in his power to try to win re-election on November 8th. Celebrating veterans for their service. Today, the Ralph H. Johnson VA Medical Center hosted its 22nd annual Veterans Day Parade. Our Kennedy Buck attended today's festivities and spoke with veterans about what it means to have their city honor their sacrifices. Kennedy. Hey Natalie, so Veterans Day may be next week, but here in Charleston celebrating veterans for their service takes place every day. I spoke with veterans who tell me it was an honor to have this city thank them for all that they've done. Veterans Day is November 11th, but here in the low country it doesn't need to be a holiday to praise these brave men and women. So today we honor you. We honor you for your service here at home and around the world, for your valor, valor and great service to our nation. On Sunday, the Ralph H. Johnson VA Healthcare System hosted its 22nd annual Veterans Day Parade, showing gratitude for all that they have done. So everything we see, everything we do, we do because of our veterans. Um, every freedom we have is because of what they did. So we're privileged to take care of them at the VA and our city loves veterans again. The parade included veteran motorcycle groups, service organization floats, and a flyover from Joint Base Charleston. An emotional moment for veterans to see. At the same time, when we have the city coming out to support us, it just, it, it, it melts our hearts. It's like, I mean, I'm tearing up right now as I think about it. They hope events like this will bring awareness to other battles they face every day. Um, there's a lot of things that a lot of us have gone through. Um, a lot of my guys have a lot of PTSDs, uh, a lot of issues that we things, things that a lot of people don't quite understand. Active duty may end, but their service is forever. Friends are 100%, 24-7, 365, so we celebrate. Our oath never ends. An oath that means showing love to each other. As uh, simple as this, we want to represent veterans. Um, this is our day, this is what we've done, we sacrificed, and this is something we all love and truly love. Mayor Tecklenburg said in his speech today that Navy Federal Credit Union named Charleston one of the best cities to move to after service. He hopes the Low Country will continue to be a city of growth.